This is uh, Dead Horse Point. Probably one of the more iconic views in all of Moab. It's so special. Oh, dude. Yes! It's my favorite sunrise spot where you can drive in, shoot for a, maybe an hour or two, just in time for the family to be awake and then make some breakfast. The sun is starting. Now you see the depth. It's pretty insane thinking about why these places truly hit your soul. I mean, it's just rocks. It triggers something in everyone and it's impossible to explain. Sweet. We all ask ourselves, how do we want to live our lives? Are we on the right path? We only get one go around, and am I making the most of it? My wife and our two girls were location independent, and we live full time in our RV. I guess you can say I have a Peter Pan complex. It's not that growing older scares me. It's that I crave new experience. And as you age, naturally, you have fewer life events that are new. This lifestyle almost forces that. It forces new experience. You're always changing, rediscovering, adapting. It keeps me feeling awake and conscious of everything that happens in my life. I'm Andy Best, and this is my lifestyle. Well, today I am gonna make Indy pancakes. She kinda had a hard night. She always loves waking up with pancakes. How big a pancake, Indy? Big one. On a Elsa. You sure you don't want any grapes? I'm okay, I think. Oh, man. Whoa. What do you think? Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> The way I would describe our lifestyle is nomadic. We travel across the US, Canada, Mexico, and sometimes beyond. Almost there, we're almost there. Let me outside. Everyone's getting a little restless in the car. What a big blowout. Oh my goodness. Here's everywhere. Life on the road with the six month old blowouts. We go from one location to the next, guided primarily by my photography and film work. And sometimes our heart and sense of adventure. We usually have things mapped out as far as possible. Sometimes that's a few months and sometimes it's just a few days. I'm thinking we reset here and make a solid plan for the next few days. We're coming up through this way. This is kind of our 361. Usually what we'll do is drive to a location where I have a shoot, look for a place to settle, then I'll work for a few days or a few weeks. So it's a lifestyle that brings a certain amount of uncertainty. But with that comes a freedom and life experience that's hard to duplicate. I mean, the whole idea is to chase fall. We're gonna begin in Utah, starting in Moab. Leaving Utah, we'll go into Colorado to Uray. I really wanna check out some spots in Silverton. Then we'll leave Colorado, go to New Mexico. Check out the Shiprock area, there's some stuff I wanna look at. Then we're gonna to go to a new area through Pagosa Springs. Check out some of the fall colors and dip into Taos for a couple mountain hikes. I mean, the whole goal to me is chasing light. I just love it back here because it's just so unique. The red dirt, the slick rock, these old ponderosas. Every angle, every inch changes. It just takes time. 
That's why living on the road is helpful. There's a Zen to it, really. You explore, it heals your soul. Hopefully you take a pretty picture. If not, you're still better off. I think I've always leaned towards the creative side of things. From my grandmother teaching me how to paint, to my father and mother who always had a camera in their hands. That early exposure to the arts and creativity made it seem like that was a viable path for me. And so I pursued that path through high school and into college. I got a degree in filmmaking and went on to work in the agency world. For a time, that was great. I was doing well, but I was also doing some freelance work on the side. And a lot of those jobs took me into the outdoors and into nature. You know, I was hiking into locations, sleeping in vans. It was this vagabond type of existence where I was immersing myself in the experience and I loved the work that I was creating. Those jobs, they opened my eyes to what I really wanted to do. And it didn't take long for me to make a change. So I left the commercial world and set off on my own. It's starting. Do I have the right settings? Oh yeah. Look at these long shadows. I don't know, there's something about it that's magical. The world, it's the shape that it is, and you can come and see its beauty, and you can get lost in it, and I love that. So that's Castle Valley. Well, that was a success. Uh, I think we're on to... Did you have fun in Moab? Ready to go to Colorado? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are? You ready to go to Colorado? Silverton is one of my favorite little mountain towns. It's like going back in time. It's also like going ahead in the season because you're so high up. While the girls have breakfast, I'm out walking around exploring, asking the locals about different hikes and places to go. I do that everywhere I go. It's essential. It is beautiful. Like it winds up through the You can look at a map all day long, but if you don't have local input, you've got nothing. And a lot of times, you get magic. We went to town to get some information. We we're working on a plan. We found a campsite, which was great. But now it's like feeling anxious because you can't plan it better than this, and the timing is so perfect. Looks like we're already out of aspens right now. So I don't know if we want to go back down or hike up and try to get like a cool mountain shot. I know Annie pretty well. He definitely pines for new adventure and he has drive that I've never seen in any other person. You know, we support this mobile lifestyle through my work. And of course, your best work is when you're at the right spot and have the time for the right conditions. This is really just a scout, but hopefully we get something. He just loves to find new places and explore and show other people what he sees through his eyes. We're at 11,000 feet. I can get to locations early, scout, take notes, study the light. Then I can really focus on getting the shot. Of course, it doesn't always go that way. So I, I didn't really know what to expect when coming up here because it's been so long and it was during the winter. There's always a lot of pressure because you're like, the beauty is here. <laughs> and the first day we drive up to test an area to see if it's gonna render like the shot, but you know, it didn't. So you kind of go home with your tail between your legs, like, am I blowing it? <laughs> you know, and so you kind of have to hunker in and 
do more do more scouting do more research talk to more people and that's the struggle with trying to capture something that means something I guess about a half an hour until the sun rises and it's on hey thank you Stay warm. How about you, Koi? Okay. We're just outside of Silverton. There's this really cool patch of aspen in the distance that is just perfectly framed in the center of these mountains. It's kind of dreamscape right now. When I left the agency world, I found myself gone for longer periods of time. I would load up the truck and just disappear. My wife Erica and I, we've been together since we were kids. And although I was happier creatively, you could imagine it put some strain on our marriage. So we came to this realization that we didn't have to exist in any one place and decided to take this leap together to give up the house and move full-time on the road. I wouldn't say that I started off my life thinking that I was gonna be doing this, and that I'm not the athlete or the most adventurous person, but I, you know, we talked about it and we both agreed that this would be best for our children and our souls. And, you know, the more you're out here, the more it grows on you and the more you love it. Welcome to our four-wheel pop-up camper. It's a bit deceiving from the outside, but the way we like to look at it is, in here we have every single thing we need that we would have in a regular home. The outside is always changing. Our environments are always changing. The only normal we have is inside here. Can grab the goldfish? Yes, mommy. Oh, don't come on. My career was definitely the catalyst for this lifestyle, but we found it made us happier in other ways. Living on the road is all about simplicity and gaining perspective of what you would normally take for granted. You quickly learn in this lifestyle what you really need and what's extra. You know, I'm so fortunate to have this amazing wife is not only on board, but shares this sense of adventure. We love the thought of raising our girls, at least for a time, outside of the box. We get to expose them to new places and people from different walks of life. I would say that this lifestyle is atypical, but we're still raising the girls just as we would be in a house. You know, playing tea party and capes and Play-Doh and play snow and you know, still getting dirty and still having to take baths and all of the fun stuff that we do in a regular house, we're just doing it in a smaller space. Will you show me your dress? Will you twirl it for me? <laughs> I get to see their eyes open wide with excitement from all the places that excite me. The sunsets, the mountain tops, the forest, the desert, and growing up surrounded by it all. We've learned to appreciate so many things that we previously took for granted and to get back to the things that matter most to us in our lives, which is each other and life experience. Yeah, so we had to leave Colorado early because there was a bunch of smoke that came in. We came down into New Mexico to check out Shiprock. We might, because we're on this side, it might make more sense to do Bistai this evening and then go out to Shiprock to maximize our time. <clears throat> I'm out here in the desert of New Mexico. <laughs> Warming up, it was a cool morning. 
waiting for sunrise. I have a time lapse going over on this other side. Just exploring these hoodoos. There's petrified wood everywhere, gorgeous towers, little slot canyons back here. So, yeah, we're just kind of waiting for the sun and uh, see what happens. I've always loved the outdoors, but my camera has definitely taken me further into nature, to places I never knew existed. I'm up early, out later, I'm always researching new locations, the weather. I've been to the Badlands here before, but I haven't explored as much as I did this time, and it was absolutely mind-blowing. It offered up so many different things with colors, shapes, and it just invigorates my creative mind, and it helps me kind of get back in the groove of things so I can stay creative. I've become addicted to these moments. When you're out there in the wild, and you just get knocked on your ass with astounding beauty. These powerful moments, they're healing for me and life-changing. The challenge I give myself has always been trying to share the emotion I feel when I'm standing there. How do I translate that feeling or fraction of that feeling into a photo? I need to figure that out. And that's the challenge, and that's why I'm out here. I think today we're gonna uh, depart and go over to check out Shiprock. So it'll be a good day. You know, this lifestyle gives us so much, but it's not without its challenges. We're all cold. We're out of propane. Come on! Ow! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She's way empty. You guys ready for some heat in there? If we run out of propane, we don't have a heater. We don't have any source to cook with. Okay. Who wants some heat? There it goes. Oh yeah, oh, the dad's gonna stand right here. The most comfort we get is when we're boondocked somewhere beautiful, we have all our gear, the supplies, fuel, propane, food, water, but it's the element in between that can be hard and unpredictable. We just have to really find out where we're gonna be able to like post up the family. Mm -hmm. The stress of always running equations. How much stuff do we really need? How much can we carry? When and where do we pick up parts or supplies? How much can we spend? How long can we stay? Those are constant pressures, and they're always looming. The dog water bowl froze, so it's definitely below 30. When I woke up to start moving the girls in the truck, I pulled the pillows away from the side, and uh, they were frozen to the side of the canvas from our little bit of condensation. Out here you grow to be comfortable with the uncomfortable to some degree. There's the feeling of isolation from family and friends, so it's easy at times to second guess yourself. You know, am I making the right decision for me and for my family? Hi! Sorry, I'm, I'm already emotional. <laughs> Come on. The downsides of this lifestyle is, you know, we've had to make a few compromises of, you know, leaving a couple of our dogs with some family. We were really sad to see them go, but really happy that they're in a good spot. So we're gonna go and make a phone call and go do a chihuahua talk. Hello? It's definitely really hard. We do, we miss him a ton. You know, we've had him for 13 years. Oh, look at him. Hey, Dex. Hey, Dex. You, so, you look so comfy with you. We're happy that they're in a good spot, but it's, it's really, really tough. But during those times of stress and doubt, I have to remind myself that we all have those feelings from time to time, regardless of which path we're on. We have one trip around, and naturally, we want to do it right. And I think the best any of us can do is just follow our hearts and intuition towards what makes us happiest and go after it.
We left Shiprock yesterday and we are taking the long way around to Taos. And so far the route's been really beautiful. There's aspens and cottonwood trees going off. Yeah, we're at 10,400 feet. It's about 73 degrees. Not too bad. It's been a good week. I look at what we're doing now and I'm just so thankful to my wife Erica, the kids, and this awesome opportunity. You know, for me, this is in some ways a road to recovery. It wasn't too long ago when I was in a much different state of mind. Erica and I had been on the road for a few years, living the mobile lifestyle, and we decided to return to living back in a house. And as I was adjusting to this stationary life, I started to feel like my career was beginning to slow significantly. I was second guessing whether I had what it took to continue as an artist. And as some of these doubts were creeping in, my close friend Chad was diagnosed with ALS. And that hit me. All of these things kind of just started me on a downward spiral. I started drinking too much, I hid away from people, and I just felt like I didn't have much more to offer anymore. And I fell into a deep depression. I felt weak and broken. I'd try and go out and shoot to look for a frame, but couldn't see it. I was at a loss, and that went on for quite a while. It wasn't until I got this job in Scotland, where I decided to stay for a week afterwards, and I just drove around, slept in my car, and took pictures. And one day, by myself on this cliff, things just started to come back to me. For whatever reason, I felt it again. I saw it in the frame. I had this energy that had been lacking for so long. I started hooting and hollering on this cliff. I felt so happy and relieved that I still had it. I came home from that trip invigorated and said, Erica, we need to hit the road again. So we came up with a plan to head back out. I think one thing that I learned from that experience was that I'm happiest when I'm creating for myself. And that my best work comes when I lose myself a bit. And I'm not thinking about who's viewing the photos or the feedback. And I'm chasing the things that I love and crave. That's when I can give something to each photo. And conversely, when a photo gives something back to me. The more often I can find that space, the happier I am with my work and myself. When I was young, I daydreamed about hiking the Pacific Crest Trail. I was curious about who I would be at the end of that journey and how I'd look at the world after that experience. That's how I look at our life on the road. I'm curious about how we'll look at things after these adventures. I'm curious about the people my daughters will become and how they will look at the world. And at the end of it, hopefully we have a better understanding and appreciation of ourselves, the world, and the people around us. But for now, we're on the road and chasing the things that excite us. <laughs>